Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Christian, and today we have Chatty Patty, or one of the hosts, the architects of the Black Ramen podcast. And what the Black Ramen podcast is, it's, you know, blurred otakus getting together to mess up all assumptions of what you thought was nerdy. And so we tap in with them, just checking them out, uh, seeing what lovely things they have on the horizon, how they got started. It was just a good conversation to sort of, you know, reflect on all the stuff that's happened with COVID and, you know, really just enjoying just being black and being unapologetic about our anime likes and our manga likes, our comic nerd likes, right? And so uh, it's just a nice, authentic, blurred conversation uh, with an awesome person that's doing a lot of great stuff. So... Without further ado, let's get it started. I wanted to take a break from the episode to let you know that we have some merch that is available. Over at Illtopia Studios, you can find the Black Superheroes Matter art book, which is a collection of illustrations that reimagine your favorite superheroes through the eyes of children of color. We also have a bunch of sticker packs, over 120 different sticker designs of your favorite superheroes. More importantly, we have our Color Me Super coloring book series. Definitely check out the merch at shop.iltopia.com or blacksuperheroesmatter.com. And now, back to the episode. Yeah, so welcome to another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast. Uh, today we have Patty with Black Ramen Podcast, you know, coming from live, I guess it's not live, but like coming from New York. Uh, obviously, you know, we're sort of bridging the gaps between the East Coast and the West Coast right now. But uh but yeah, you know, how's everything been with you, right? Like, uh, it's been uh, it's been busy for me because I've been, you know, as of the season that just passed, there's a lot of good animes, and we're trying to touch base and seeing at least three episodes of all of them so we can recommend what's good and what's you know what's trash, <laughs> yeah. and um, trying to put out great content for our listeners. So you know, we've been definitely cooking, cooking, cooking. So yeah, it's been great. It's been great. So outside's open, so I can't wait for these cons, you know, fully yeah. vaccinated and all. So I'm ready. I'm ready. Like it, it's it's, you know, I'm curious to see like one like what does this year look like? Because obviously like most of the cons won't be at like full capacity, you know, and and people are still. I mean, people are still going to be hesitant to go, and so yeah. it's uh you know what that experience looks like, and and whether this ex- whether this current experience will be you know sort of the expectation going forward you know because it, oh it's, i'm uh, excited i i i'm know. glad that is going to be a limit to how many people are going to be going to these cons because now that's more space for me so like <laughs> i'm i l- listen i'm excited to see how anime nyc is going to look with mm. um the conditions that they're because i i'm thinking that right now they're not allowing as much people as they were before since it wasn't really so crowded like it was for um comic-con at the yeah. Jacob Chavitt Center, because it's like maybe like maybe seventy four percent of that. But now that we get half, I just want to do hood rash shit with my friends. That's it. Like I, <laughs> I just I can't wait. I'm just I'm just excited. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I think it's a. I think it really is going to make. I don't know. I feel like it's make going to make it like more novel or just like more of a niche thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for people that are like in the niche. I, I can't complain about that, right? You know, it just makes for a better experience because you don't have to cater to so many people. It's, uh, you know, the lines aren't going to be as long. You still, you know, you hopefully will have the same level of creators that are going to it. And uh, right. and it's going to be a little more personal. Of, you know, it's going to, I feel like you'll get more bang for your buck, you know? And uh, what I'll be curious to see is like, whether some of that, like whether, um, some of that experience will be accessible virtually where like you get uh where you get sort of like a virtual pass and you just get all the they record all the zoom sessions so uh i mean listen if you don't want to go outside that's fine if you want to do the virtual experience i'm not knocking anybody that wants to do it but me personally i got to be out there i want to i want to build more listeners more followers networking and I feel like the best way for me to do is actually be out there, have my foot yeah. right there at the door. So I'm like, hey, listen, you you like anime, right? Hold up. 
scan this. This is my virtual card. Let's go. Come on. We got a whole podcast out there. Listen to us. Like I, I love connecting with people in that way, but um, yeah. Yeah. But you know, the virtual thing, keeping everybody safe. I appreciate those who do consider going that route and having a safe experience for the cons. The main important thing is as long as you are there, as long as you are virtually or physically there, as long as you are there for the experience, because 2019 mm-hmm. has been some, mm, yeah. Mm. So yeah, it, it, it was, it was some nonsense. And so, yeah, it was. you know, uh, but yeah, yeah. You know, so you have a podcast, like how, first and foremost, like, what do you, like, what do you, what do you do as a creator? Like, what is, what is sort of like your thing? Are you sort of a, a jack of all trades or are you really honed in on just, you know, diving deep into to cultural stuff and anime like what like give us give us the gist here well you yeah you can pretty much say i'm a jack of all trades like i um my first love was was actually comics and then afterwards i was um i was introduced to anime like in uh freshman year of high school and that was my thing mm. and and i i mean art and animation has been like a, it's been everything to me so i've been actually i'm an artist Try to get back in the niche of things, but you know, um, lack of confidence will really do something to you as an artist, as a creative. Oh, it's yeah. really bad. It's really bad. But yeah, so um, I once I realized how, like, I was looking for a, a place where I could actually connect with people like me and have conversations about art, about storytelling, about anime, about comics. And um, there's not a lot of them out there so i was like you know what yeah. i'm not waiting no more let's start let's start this off let's start this off so um uh, i had a friend of mine who had a meetup in brooklyn that was an anime meetup and it was a lot of um different people from different backgrounds that showed up and i realized that yo this is my element i love this and um i love talking to people and i love telling people um uh, my perspective on certain animes you know, from the, from the black perspective, you know, cause mm-hmm. it's not really, it's not, we don't really see representation in anime. So that's not going to stop me from actually, you know, <laughs> critiquing them, you know, at yeah. the end of the day. So yeah. I just, I just have, I just wanted to f- build a space where blacks and POCs could come together and actually vibe out and talk and actually come out with content of their own as far as like animating storytelling because that's my biggest thing i want to support black creatives and Mm -hmm. i want them to actually know that if there is no space for you make it and i i want to help yeah and i think that's a you know much like everything else right like you have to start someplace yeah so if there isn't a space which there always is never a space prior to somebody making the space right and and then once you make it, then it's just a matter of sharing it and then just sort of being consistent with keeping up with the space. And because uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, like that, that's just sort of the, that's just how things work, right? Yes. Uh, but it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like it, it's, it's interesting because growing up, right? Like probably the same for you. It's like, Unami was a thing. And people was watching Toonami, and by default, just every other show was an anime show. Whether it was you got in when it was Yu Yu Hockey Show, whether it was Dragon Ball Z, whether it was Gundam, you know, like they're like Trigun, like like they're like it's just always been around. And every black person that I know, every person of color, always had their favorite like, you know, they always had their favorite show that they watched, you know. Yeah. Like that, like even even when it came to like, you know, Saturday morning cartoons. Remember with like Fox Kids, WB Kids and all that stuff? You know, you were either you were either a, a Digimon kid or a Beyblade kid or yeah. you know, Pokemon, you know, it, it's a it's always just sort of ingrained like everybody has that everybody has that experience. Uh, yeah. if they were growing up. Uh, but then to that point, right? Like, you know, the only the the pe- the person that you would identify with is what rock <laughs> you know or like that like that's about as far as you would get really like yeah there wasn't there wasn't a lot no there there wasn't it was like uh to be honest with you I didn't even notice this but in high school like in, in middle school my major was art 
all throughout middle school and high school. So most of the characters, like I, I, I used to draw a lot of um, characters that I would read from DC, Marvel, right? So um, I had a classmate of mine who um, sat next to me and asked me, yo, you never draw black characters. Usually I draw what I see in these comics because I'm trying to perfect, you know, the the um, the anatomy and, you know, the over-exaggerated muscles and stuff like that. And I never noticed, I never noticed until she, she asked me, like, how come you never draw black characters? I mean, it's because I never see them. Yeah. You know, that was, that was kind of like far-fetched for me to actually, and I didn't notice this subconsciously. I never noticed this, that I wasn't drawing black characters. And yeah. I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's how important I feel like representation is. Cause you don't know it, how important it is until you see it. Like, and, and it's, 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 it's kind of sad, but you want the new generation that is coming up right now to know that there's a place for them. And if there isn't, make one of your own. Like we are superheroes. We are the mightiest of the mighty. And what makes it even amazing is that look what we did for anime. We made anime pop culture mainstream because <laughs> Black people POC has made it hot. We may not be the biggest consumers, but we definitely are trendsetters. And we definitely yeah. set the trend for this to be like pop culture, like hands down. Like if you go to TikTok, half of the TikTok community is just, if it's not like cute animals or cooking shows, it's anime or yeah, dance even moves. To the, like even those sort of like abridged voiceovers, right? Yes. You know, like it, even to that point, you know, you'll have like an animated show and then you'll have somebody that's, you know, you know, somebody black that's sort of voicing over it and making it culturally relevant. You know, it's yeah. comedy, it's it's action, it's all these things that like, you know, sort of come with, you know, including culture in there. And uh, and yeah, I think to that point, um, because I was watching this thing called uh, on Netflix called This Is Pop, and uh, and the and I mean, if you haven't seen that, like that sort of docu series, that that just puts everything into context right mm -hmm. where they did the one with uh they did the one with um with boys to men was like the first episode and they were saying and they were like in terms of boy bands boys to men sort of paved the way oh yeah most were, like everybody right there wouldn't be any in sync backstreet boys 98 degrees without boys to men yeah but then they said you know the majority of people that were paying were were white you know like they were white people that were paying and and so once you know but they were the they were sort of the the reference point for like those experiences and i was like oh i felt it but to see like to actually look back and see like dang like all this stuff was actually because of them and then obviously you just bring in in sync and justin timberlake and all that and, and they're the ones that get the posters. They're the, they're the ones that sort of like champion this sort of idea. But it, yeah. it, it's, you know, like, um, new edition, like New Edition. New Edition came out, I think, before um, New Kids yeah. on the Block. And New Edition, were, were, they didn't get merch. It was New Kids on the Block that got merch. So New Edition, yeah. they would go on the road, go on tours. And then after that, they would take a bus and go back to, you know, where they're from, back in the hood, right? But new mm -hmm. edition, they were really doing like the big tours. They had cartoon shows. They had, if I'm not mistaken, they had sneakers. They had merch, merch. Like they had dolls, shirts. New yeah. edition didn't have any of that. So it's like, you know, people don't acknowledge what paves the way for some of these artists to come and yeah. actually have the avenue for themselves, you know. But then again, you know, it is what it is, you know. It, yeah, it, it like and uh I think the funniest thing was because uh, 98 Degrees was sound, signed to Motown. Mm. And, 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 so, uh, and so Babyface was, uh, was managing 98 Degrees. And he literally said, the reason 98 Degrees existed was because we knew that boys to men will, will have a majority, they were pop, you know, like they were mm. sort of a crossover artist that that you know majority of people that came to watch them were white but those same people would go back home and you would never see a poster of boys to men on their wall wall yeah you know and so what babyface said is that you know the whole point of 98 degrees was saying that 
when you go home, you'll see a poster of 98 degrees on their wall. And that comes with a whole level of different things that come with it, right? And mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, the, the, the sound, all those things were sort of just templated off of, off of Boys to Men, but it had that sort of palatable factor. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, that thing that, that, yeah. that, uh, that, that yields sort of that, that other return. And yeah, so the marketing, like, the advertisement. You know? Yeah, the money, yeah. you know, that's, and so, uh, that's, and so that's more like, pleasing. You know, I think that, I think that encapsulates, you know, sort of the, the, the Black experience for creators, where that is ultimately the dynamic where uh, in order for a Black artist to be sort of popular or mainstream, they have to cross over. Mm hmm but for a, a predominantly white audience, you know, a, a white artist, you know, you come out and you, you're not a crossover artist. It's just sort of something that, you know, you're in that already. You're born into it. And so, Pretty much. I'm waiting for yeah. a white version of me to come out right now because I guarantee coming <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 in this business, I knew that Crunchyroll, Netflix, Hulu, they they wouldn't have a place for me because of the way I speak and the way that I I, I have no filter. They're like, damn, could we really use her? But yeah. I know there's gonna be another version of me, straight hair, blonde <laughs> hair, blue eyed, that's yep. gonna come and be like, we can work with her. Let's work with Patricia. That's safe. Yes, Not yes, Patty, Patricia. but Patricia. I'm just waiting. You're I'm just waiting Patricia. for a white version of me to come out, and then they're like, oh, we can mark. That, that's marketable. I'm waiting for a, a black ramen 98 degrees version of me to come out. And then like it. you know, it's it literally, they literally call it the white ramen podcast. There you go. White ramen. There, there it is. There it is. <laughs> that's a that's a whole fact. It's a sad story. We laugh about it, but yeah, it's it's terrible. It's, it's, it's a sad story. You know, it's uh, and I think it's a, uh, you know, as we sort of look back, there's always a there's always an example of this happening, mm -hmm. right? Like you yeah. mentioned, you know, new kids on the block in 98 degrees, right? Yeah. Like we got boys to men and freaking, you know, the the flurry of, of, of ones that came after that, you know? Yeah. We got this whole thing that's happening now with TikTok with, you know, like all the black creators and freaking just all the the templated out, just sort of like white replicas that, um, that are happening. Like it, yeah. it's every generation has it. And uh, even though it may look a little different, it's still the same thing. And uh, and I just find it, I just find it interesting, like being able to like look back and like reflect on. It. I just find it interesting as a creator, sort of going through all this stuff, where it's like, you know, I would like my creativity to pay some of my bills, so I don't have to, you know, Listen, compromise so my I'm, time. I'm I don't even gonna hold you. I'm looking for the biggest check right there right now. I'm just letting you know right now. Yeah. So I, I I know what I did stepping into this that, you know, I would love, the objective is always to make money, but also to also, um to enlighten people, POCs yeah. and Blacks and let them know that, hey, listen, don't be afraid to put your content out there, but also as us, as consumers, we have to make sure we control where our money's going, right? And yeah. we, could, we control where who we support. You know, so if you see a content creator, black content creator, and you like this person and you want more content, show support. Um, if you see a black artist out there that's doing commission work, don't ask for a discount. Don't do that. That's that's so that's so that's so ghetto, bro. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Support the artist because at the end of the day, blacks and POCs have to work ten times as hard just to get the basics of recognition or just to even get a decent check from companies and that's yeah. and that's messed up so be supportive find these black content creators find these black creatives and just support them you like comics support black indie comics shout out to concrete comics i love them just shout oh, yeah. them out look them up and 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 just 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 give them support just you following them gives them support you just commenting on their on on their comments on ig just gives them support like that means a lot if you got a couple of coins it's okay you can go to patreon donate a dollar five dollars you don't even know how much that means to that creative that you took the time out logged into their patreon made an account put in a dollar or five dollars that goes a long way that shows so much just the effort itself can keep yeah. that creative going so it's just a matter of being supportive like the fact that now on tiktok the black um creatives 
had that strike where they weren't making dance moves because at the end of the day, when they were putting out dance moves, you had white folks doing the same dance moves and not crediting, not giving them any credit. So they were stealing the moves and people thought they were the originator of these moves and come to find out their unseasoned butt was not even making, um, was not even giving them credit. So it's like, yeah. all right, so now we're on strike. We're not making any moves. Did you see the dance moves that were coming out? The caucasity it, of it all? It, like, I'm just like, you're so not nonsense. even trying. <laughs> Like it, no. it, was, it was literally well, it, it's 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 like those like sort of those old sort of jokes and memes where uh, where you see like little white kids just like the music comes on and they just doing whatever whatever they do right like it's just they're just moving and then you see like you know a, a meme of it like twenty years later they're doing the exact same things they were doing when they were three years old when music comes on just spazzing just making moves it, it's it's like dang you know I understand like I'm all for being expressive you know. But but if you're gonna just do anything, I mean, you've got to at least have some pride, you know. Like you, you just gotta you you gotta have, you know. Like you can't just put you, you just can't be walking out the house all ashy. Like you gotta you gotta take some pride in it. Like right, like it, it's 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 some nonsense. And, and like it, it's uh, because like I I did a project. Um, I went like I was part of like the wave of like black creators that were getting like um that were getting. Uh, I guess shadow banned on TikTok, mm -hmm. and so uh, and so part of it was like, once I got to a certain part where I, you know, was able to like make money off of TikTok, you start to see like how much each view is like associated. Like you see that, and then when you get shadow banned, you see like how much money you're missing out on, mm -hmm. just because you know, right? And so it's really this ban. I appreciated it because it was sort of the flip side of that. Where it's like, you know, I'm not making any money off of this stuff. So I'd be, you know, I'd be damned if you try to make some money off of, off of me, you know, and I ain't getting no royalties. Like what? Like None. that's some nonsense right there. None. And so, and so it's like, I'm, I'm really curious to see like, what is the, what is like, what would be the impact of that? Because the less people copy, the less people copy the, copying the dance means that there's less revenue being generated. And, right. and, and that has an impact. I mean, yeah. people feel that, and right. and so um, I'd be curious to see what those out beds look like. You know, where it's like, this is the these are the these are the forecasts now. You know, um, but it is tough though, right? Because you know, with with the strikes and with all these things not not being available, then it's like sort of the the stuff that we grew accustomed to as consumers are no longer available. And mm -hmm. so then, and so then it's like, okay, where do we go? What do we do to, uh, to still get that fix? You know? And, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it just shows appreciate. Like you take, it's, it's, it shows awareness. So now yeah. you sit down and you realize like, damn, you know, there's really nothing on my feed. Yeah. So now when they come back, what you do is when you see somebody taking that dance, you hit the sound on the bottom of the TikTok, find out who the originator is, give that person all your likes, mm -hmm. like, I don't, when some, I always check on TikTok if I'm on somebody's page and I see them using a sound and it's funny, I give them a like too. But before I leave, I go to that sound and find the originator of that sound and make sure that person gets the like and yeah. the follow because that's their content, you know? Yeah. Um, I've learned to do that more often now. Now with, with Black Ramen being the way it is on Instagram, I like to get, content um from you know the anime community so what i do is i try to make sure that they have an ig and i tag them if i repost any of their content on ig mm -hmm. and um i'm just more mindful now to make sure that the originators get the credit because yeah yo, i'm laughing <laughs> you brought a smile to me or you brought awareness to me yeah. you deserve credit let me get that. Let me give you that heart. It's nothing just to give them the heart, just to give them the appreciation because they took the time out to make the content. Just show, just a little tap. It's nothing. It's nothing. I think now that with that being um, more vocal now with people coming out saying, yeah, support your black creatives. I think now us as a community are realizing that, yo, we got power. Mm -hmm. We have power in numbers. We can actually change this. And um, I'm not, you know, I'm cool with, the with the um uh, with them not making with the strike i'm 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 fine with it i'm good yeah my feed may be lacking but hey 
if that's the case, I'll just pick up a manga and start reading. But this is their time to shine right now. This is the message that they're trying to push. So yeah. I, I feel like this is the message that we should all get behind and support it. So I'm good. Like, uh, to that, like, what? Because um, I, like, my TikTok feed is, like, super random. Um, but, like, in a very particular niche. So, like, what I ran into is that... Um, you know, I like animation and stuff like that, and but I don't go to TikTok for that. I appreciate sort of like the, you know, like the anime mashups and like the AMV videos and stuff like that. But I really got into this sort of, you know, subculture of like black skaters, like black skateboarders, and and they like skaters, like skateboarders, scooter, like like people that ride scooters and um and inline skating and uh, and stuff and so I, I i i kid you not i've seen the craziest tricks i've seen the wildest things that like black people are doing on TikTok, like with skateboards and stuff like that's where i go to TikTok for that's what my feed is all on and so uh have you found yourself like stumbling into a just like a random TikTok, you know sort of feed or scene that like you just didn't expect to have a lot of content in um no because i don't really because the first thing i did when i got onto tiktok was make sure to follow and to look up everything black so like i made sure i looked at <laughs> black content creators black animators um black podcasts so i just made sure i like those first and then mm. i let i build up my for you page because i didn't want to see any mess because i know that yeah. tiktok can be definitely be a place where karen's thrive so yes. it's like i didn't want to stumble upon some uh a random Trump supporter talking about all types of craziness. <laughs> so I was like, nah, I don't want, no, nah, I don't want to give this person any time of day because even though that person, you may not like the person, the moment it's on your for you page, they get that view. Yeah. yeah. So nah, 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 nah. I made sure my page is not saturated with all types of mess. I made sure I liked what I liked and I enjoy it. So it's cool. Hmm. Yeah, it's I don't even know how I I'm I'm straight on, you know, black skateboarder TikTok. Like that that is That sounds that cool is, though. That, that is, sounds cool. That is my, you know, this I would say is look at this dude named named Skategoat. Look at Skategoat. Skategoat. Yeah, literally Skategoat. Like that that dude right there, it's like what and what and crazy. Oh yeah, and snowboarders. Like I cuz I'm a big snowboarder and you just rarely see black people snowboarding. And so uh, so like snowboarders and skateboarders, those are like that's why I go to TikTok for. Like oh. it, it's 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 you know allows me to tap into my other my other sort of like passion, right? Like you know the rocket power days. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and and so um, how did you like? How did the whole Black Ramen podcast uh, come about? Like, was it just something I was like, yeah, you know, I just want to start a podcast or did you have this sort of vision that you, you wanted to achieve? Um, how it started was, um, I'm not gonna lie to you when we, uh, when our friends started that anime meetup, well, this is, well, let me just plug this in real quick. So basically if, if you are now that outside is open and you want to get to meet people that have common interests with you, there's an app on Apple called Meetup. So it gives you all the meetup spots that everybody is based on what your interest is. So I put anime and I found this meetup and it was a, it was literally called a Brooklyn Anime Meetup and they meet up every other Saturday, right? At a restaurant. And um, the only thing you had to do was just make sure you purchase something at the restaurant and you're literally there from three to eight, mm -hmm. right? It's three to seven, but we're usually there till it closes. So when I noticed that when I went to these meetups, right, the the um, creator of the meetup, his name is Enzo, shout out to Enzo, always said that, yo, when you pull up, it's always popping. I'm like, what you mean? He said, I realized because when you're coming, you have to put in the app that you're coming so you can reserve your spot, right? Yeah. So when I put that I'm coming, he notices that a lot of people pull up. Cause I come and I'm like, are you serious? So he kind of made me the assistant uh, coordinator of the meetup as well, because of the fact that I was able to communicate and talk to everybody. It was just a vibe. It was fun. And 
I was like, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast. I want to be able to talk and, and just rant. Cause it was, it's usually rants. It's usually rants because yeah. you know, sometimes anime studios don't get it right all the time. So it's like, it's oh, always no. a rant. Uh-huh. especially when you're reading the manga, I'm looking at you, Clover work. I still won't forget you for promise. Never. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you're just like, you know, like, it, it, I don't know. I listened to um, one of my one um, podcast I listened to that was like, I, I can do this was um, hip hop and anime vibes. Okay. Right. Okay. So shout out to um, D Town. He was, we, we do work together. As a matter of fact, he's on my show and I'm on his. It's amazing. Oh, nice. It's amazing. So um, afterwards, I was like, bro, I, okay, bet. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And what's so funny is the co hosts that are on the show with me are the same ones that I vibe with at the meetup. Oh, nice. Nice. So, so I couldn't see so myself. It just, it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Like he, Enzo literally created Black Ramen. He doesn't know this, but he literally created Black Ramen. So uh, we sat there and we focused on, you know, us being able to speak and put, like, like just having our perspective on certain stories and what we, what other people should be listening to and watching and stuff like that and reading. Yeah. Like just our opinions from a Black perspective. New York is on top of that. So it's like, you know, we, we just came with a swag and we was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And it, it's been a fun, fun journey. Not all, but it's been, it's been a fun, interesting journey. I've learned a lot uh, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I, I hope Black Ramen becomes like a staple on every nerd's, every Black nerd's home. Like I just want them to just have a black ramen poster every nerd in the back of their wall and be like oh this is, I, I i mess with chatty patty heavy like she she, she are so nice nice Hopefully, yeah fingers and, crossed fingers crossed like i think you know i think that like stories like that are always like you know inspiring and empowering right because it really just said you know you have an interest in something and you just pursued it and just pursuing the interest just brings you joy right and and in many ways it's just sort of just finding ways to be of service that that just makes you feel good right you get to be yourself on unauthentically and uh and you know puts out into the world and then you know and then you sort of have this sort of cultural staple that that just comes from it over time and uh and i feel like that's that's just how everything starts right like it, it's not it's not premeditated it's not like you try to you know, game the system and try to, you know, make $20 million off of something. It's like, this is just wholesome, wholesome fun. You know, this is what, um, hold on, Steven. If a $20 million check Duke stumble upon me. (laughs) Yeah. If it does happen to show up, you know, if I just sign it. Oh yeah. Look at, look at, if they, if if, if somebody trying to drop some coin, so look at, that's, that's a whole nother story. Period. What? Like, look here, I got a backlog episode everybody can listen to. You know, if, if you want some exclusive stuff, let me know, right? Like, I have no problem, right? You know, Facts. I could put the homies on, you know, I could I could put some people on payroll, you know, like it, it's a you know, I could pay I could pay my rent for the next couple of years. I ain't gotta worry about nothing. I could buy me Facts. look it, I could I could I could invest in the next Bitcoin spike. Like I'm I'm straight. Right, like, <laughs> straight. You Facts. know, it's a. Uh, uh, but but it, it's a. It, I think for sort of like this whole uh, like gig economy and sort of like being freelance and this stuff, and you know, like as an artist, right? Like most of the stuff that like you do as a creator is really sort of you have a passion or interest in it, and you and because you're interested in it and you're willing to develop a skill set to improve you know, like you, you, you can be patient to sort of like, sort of put things out there and if things happen, cool. If they don't, at least I got to make some cool stuff and I got to meet some cool people. Right. Right. And so, and so it's like, you know, for many people, uh, many black creators in general, um, you know, you, there's other, there's other motivating factors that, that, you know, can tell you to continue doing these things, you know? And so, you know, I, I just, I've appreciated that, but then I see that as, as you sort of progress, then people are more inclined to want to support so that they can sit, so that they don't see it go away, Right. you know, 
and um, and that support can be that sort of passive income that that can help support things, right? And so it's like just being consistent and reaching to your hundredth episode, and then that hundredth episode you have a guest on that just loves listening to it, and they happen to have a following that pushes it over. Like it, it's just right. like those sort of nuances that happen, and then before you know it, you know you get sponsorships and all this stuff because you fine tuned the craft, you, you've, na you've narrowed your focus on things, you've just improved in these organic ways that really fit to you. And so, uh, yeah, you know. I kind of, I kind of think of it like it's, it's like one piece. The experience yeah. is definitely like one piece. You don't yes. look at the numbers. You don't look at how long it's going to take you to get to where you want to go. You just enjoy the journey. Right. Yeah. First of all, praise Oda. Praise Oda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just look at, you just look at the, you just look at the experiences of the journey and appreciate the friends that you've gained along the way, the connections you've had, the networking and, and the, the lessons that you learn. Like, yeah. I could actually say now I'm a boss lady right now. Like I'm a boss. Like, you know, I've actually taken big woman things. Like I've, I've sat there and trademarked the logo bought the name LLC and everything like that feels great that I can do that you know I yeah, wasn't yeah. thinking about that I just wanted to like I said I just wanted to do hood rash shit with my friends like I just wanted to vibe yeah. I just wanted to have fun yeah. but <laughs> with all that being said protection comes um with a price right so you have yes. to learn how to make sure that no one takes advantage of the name or the title that you are right if you're working with your friends, if money is being um, talked about, all of it is on paper of how it's going to be separated. So y'all could continue to remain friends, yeah. you know? So it's, it's, it's been a journey and I'm loving every minute of it, loving every minute of it. And I wouldn't change that for the world. That's the biggest thing. This, this podcast has been very therapeutic. If not for anything, I've actually through the whole pandemic, I've actually been able to just chill and just record and talk about my favorite anime, my favorite manga cousin, and mm -hmm. all that, and been able to forget about the madness that's going on outside. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's helped me more than anything. So if 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 this happens where Black Ramen stays as just Black Ramen and not a household name, I, I'd be okay. I would yeah. definitely be okay. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> I always like, I'm, I'm like, I always like in the back of my mind, I, I appreciate the journey, at least like with this whole project, because this whole project literally started off uh, this in 2014, when like, when all the Oscar so white stuff started happening and all that, I was just sit, like, just chilling on my cousin's couch in LA. And I was like, dang, you know, I need to get a job, but I want to like draw some stuff. And so I just had a sketchbook and I just started just making all my favorite characters black. You know, this is before that whole wave of representation. And so I just started posting stuff online. Um, and it just started off as just like a, just me just doing my favorite mashups of, of all my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And the only caveat is that they just had to be, the, the visual representation of each character had to be uh, just black kids, just sort of cosplaying in their own stuff, right? And then from there, as I started like posting stuff, then people were like, hey, do you have a print of that? Can you do this, this, and this? And so at this point, I didn't have a print or anything, but print on demand was still like, was starting to come out. You know, print on demand was starting to be more of a thing. And so I was like, oh snap, I got tons of il illustrations. And so I could just do little Amazon print on demand, turn this into like a little coffee table book and, and, start, and start doing that. And so did that and I started uh, I started going to like conventions and stuff and just sort of doing street art and all those things. And then when like the pandemic hit, then it was like, well, dang, you know, all my plans to do conventions and all that, well, that ain't going nowhere. Like, like I'm not doing anything with that. So then I was like, well, you know, there's a, it has like a decent following and, you know, people, people like the stuff that I'm doing and I, I don't get to connect with the create like with the black creators that I would normally connect with on like at conventions. So I was like, well, what if I just start a podcast and I just connect with, you know, new ones and meet new ones and stuff like that virtually? Because I mean, what else am I going to do? Right. You know, I'm a draw. I mean, I'm just, you know, play games or whatever, and that's it. No conventions. So 
uh, from there, I was like, well, why don't I just start a podcast and, and start to, to see if I could just make those connections virtually. And so when I do get to go to conventions, you know, I could, uh, you know, I'll know more people. I'll be able to connect with more people and, and stuff like that. And so that, that's, that's like sort of the evolution of it. But then I got into medical school. <laughs> and so then it was just like, okay, well, now I can just sort of focus on this. And when I have an opportunity to do other stuff, you know, I can. But, you know, I see this whole pathway that like, you know, I could explore that uh, that makes me still feel connected to the community and mm -hmm. uh, and and be able to cross pollinate in, in certain ways. Right. And so it's like as things expand, you know, in my professional career as a physician or as anything else, you know, like the projects that I'm working on, the connections that I'm that I'm having now are, are making now. Um, you know, people are able to, you know, the community is able to benefit from that yes. and not just, and not just me. And uh, I, I, I think just like, as you, as you grow as sort of a creator, you start to see like what the impact of your creativity is. And, uh, and it's not necessarily something that like, I really thought about like going into it, right? You just want to make cool stuff and you just want to have fun, right? But uh, but over time, as you continue to have fun and then you see what the impact of having fun leads to, it's like, huh, I, I didn't expect this, but I kind of like this mess. This is, this is cool. This is cool. I could I get used to this, you know? And uh, I don't know, it's, I think I'm still at that, like, I'm, I'm at, I have a level of awareness where I can appreciate it now. And, uh, and um and I appreciate it because it's not something that I expected, not the feeling I expected to have going into it. But I wouldn't mind if it continues, you know? That's so cool. We need more Black physicians, so that's amazing. Looking yes, yes, to, yes. I'm looking that, forward to seeing the progress on that. Congratulations to you. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, that, that is true. Uh, you know, health disparities is a thing. <laughs> and part of it is because you you go in the hospital and you'd be like, oh snap, there's black people. I didn't even know that. You know, it's wild. Right? I feel at um, home. I feel yes, like I'm gonna be yes. safe today if something happens. Yes. Yeah. That, that is essentially, <laughs> you know, that is that is the that is the aspiration that I want to make a reality, you know. Um and it, it's a I th I think, you know, as as a creator, right? Like you you kind of when you're trying to sort of progress as a, as a, as an artist, you are always, it's particularly black artists. Like you're always trying to find, you have, you're always in the struggle to find some sort of stability, right? Whether you're being, uh, where you can create things consistently, whether you could, um, whether you're not distracted from, you know, life to create, right? Um, and so like the, the pathway to go into medicine, part of that is like, during a pandemic, that is probably, you know, like you will never not have a job, right? Like, you know, no, no couch surfing just to, just to, you know, find time and space to, 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 to do or, you know, express yourself. And so, uh, and so that was, that was really one of the things that, um, aside from, you know, obviously being a black physician, it's really just like that. It comes with a level of stability that, um, that I could, I, I didn't have to completely rely on just being a freelancer and making album covers for everybody so that so that i could put you know pay bills and stuff like that so um it'll be an interesting journey i think uh, i mean i start in like a month a month and a half so it's it, it's it's starting no matter how i feel <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty much but know. go ahead go ahead we listen i believe in you that's great that's awesome yeah. you're gonna eat yeah. that you're gonna kill it <laughs> <laughs> yes fingers crossed <laughs> Uh, I'll need some escape. So, you know, <laughs> having a list of podcasts to listen to and escaping from is is definitely going to give me an opportunity to balance. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Fine. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. You know, like I, I, I really appreciate the time. You know, I appreciate stopping on the podcast and, and sharing a little bit about your story and, and the journey that you've been on and uh where can people find you oh thank well first of all thank you for having me i appreciate it uh so you can definitely find us on instagram which is black ramen 
Podcast all together. And then we have Apple. We're on Apple Podcasts, Black Ramen Podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on YouTube. Black Ramen Podcast is on YouTube. We also have a Twitch. But definitely check out our Instagram because there's a link tree on there and you can be connected with us all through the links that are available on the tree. And yeah, you could rob with us, chop it up with us, send us um, listening letters. We also have like a new segment called Ask Black Ramen, where you send us an email, ask us a question, we'll talk about it in the show. And other creatives, artists, like comic book um, creatives, if you have any projects that you want to send our way, you can definitely send it to us and we'll review it for you. And we just want to have, we just want to put Black creatives out there. So if so if there's other uh, POCs and Black um Black nerds who just want more content with Black heroes and just a Black story instead of the whole, you know, how can I put yeah. this? The, 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 um, what was that show? Like the slavery, the, 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 you know, like you don't want that. You want sci fi. You want Black people can yeah. do sci fi. Black oh, people can 12, do everything. Was it like a 12, 12 years of slave? Yeah, we don't, I'm tired. We don't want that no more. We don't want that no more. So, <laughs> I'm trying my best to actually promote artists that actually have great content for other POCs and other Black uh, uh, nerds to watch and read and listen to. So, hey, shout out, uh, like, you know, reach out to us and we'll definitely put you in the forefront. And yeah, that's our main objective. So yeah, that's it. Black Ramen Podcast. Nice. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely put that in, put that in the links and all that stuff with, uh, you know, with, uh, all the links and everything you know it, it's a uh, yeah because what really what i really enjoy like with this is being able to not only like share stories and stuff but just try to just expand the branches as much as possible you know as you sort of as you expand the branches then the reach of just the idea of black creativity uh goes further to right. where it's not a surprise that you see a black person that loves anime or that creates in the space. It's like, oh snap, there's a black anime? It's like, you know, it's it shouldn't be a novel thing. Black people watch anime. So it should be natural that black people create the stuff too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're getting there, right? We're getting yeah, there. We're getting right? there, we're getting there. We are. <laughs> you know, and so, uh, and so yeah, you know, definitely appreciate it. Uh, appreciate, you know, chopping it up for a little bit um you know best of wishes in the in the heat <laughs> as as things uh, as things you know as global warming gets perpetuated you know we like it you know this 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 some, this some nonsense you know it is whole, it is it is you know it, it, it is some nonsense and so uh yeah just really appreciate it and we'll, we'll definitely put the links and everything to it so uh without further ado we'll We'll cut it from there and uh and yeah best of luck with everything thank you you too and good luck on your journey and i think you'll make an amazing amazing position trust yes. me you're Fingers good crossed. you got Fingers this crossed. you got this you got this you got this <laughs> thank you and there we have it that is another episode of the black superheroes matter podcast in the wraps again the purpose of this podcast is for people to get exposed to a variety of different things that black people are creating in the arts and entertainment industry. The goal is for this podcast to bring light to all those and those creators because as a community we have the opportunity to skirt some of the problems that we've seen in this day and age when it comes to expressing blackness. And so if you love this definitely check out the more work that we're doing, go to at Black Superheroes Matter, or you can go to BlackSuperheroesMatter.com to check out the blog and the write-ups that we do on these guests. And if you're so inclined, feel free to support my work at Iltopia, where we have the Black Superheroes Matter art book, the Black Superheroes Matter sticker packs, and even coloring books, activity guides. And so if you want to check that stuff out, Check it out at shop.iltopia.com. It's all black owned. I might add, they're all handmade products. And they're all made with love for the community that has really given me the opportunity to find my place in this world. 
And so, again, thank you for another wonderful episode. Thank you for listening. Feel free to follow all the stuff that Black Superheroes Matter is cranking out. And excited to share another wonderful guest with you on next episode. So without further ado, thank you very much.